And the advice I would give to the students that are here, because we have a lot of students that come into kinesiology, is to take advantage of the value-added experiences you get at a university, the interacting with your professors and the research they're doing, things like an institute like Huffines would be doing, but there's many other institutes and centers here on campus. Getting involved in things outside of just the standard coursework is, I think, what an institution like Texas A&M allows for, and it's just taking advantage of that. And that doesn't end when you graduate. And, you know, I'm, we work in graduate education, and we have a robust master's and PhD. Like getting involved, growing, learning, getting certifications and other things as you go out to expand your knowledge and what areas you become interested in. Welcome to On The Move from the Texas A&M Department of Kinesiology and Sport Management. Howdy and welcome to On The Move. I'm Chelsea Reber and today I am joined by Dr. James Carson, the director of the Huffines Institute. Dr. Carson, thank you for joining me today. It's great to be here. Good afternoon. Can you briefly describe your role with the Department of Kinesiology and Sport Management? I'm a professor in the uh, Department of Kinesiology and Sports Management and uh, in the kinesiology side. And then I'm also um, the director of the Huffines Institute for Sports Medicine and Human Performance. Um, as part of my duties. And tell our listeners exactly kind of what the Huffines Institute does. Yeah. The, 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 uh, the Huffines Institute goes way back to uh, before it was even named. It was an institute for sports medicine and, and human performance. Uh, Jack Wilmore, who is sort of a legend in the kinesiology field, was sort of a visionary and wanted to bridge the gap between sort of what he saw as the sports scientists, researchers, and others, and then the practice of, of uh, sports medicine and, and the coaching and the um, application of this. And th that was the, really the impetus to start the, the institute. And then through further work that uh, predates me, but I'm, I'm sure involved many people in the, in the Texas A&M University and others, um, um, Sydney, uh, uh, J.L. Huffines Institute was formed based on an endowment gift. And that was really the impetus to, to move forward with this, this gift uh, that created the Huffines with the mission of what uh, Jack Wilmore had. And so that's evolved over, I believe that's around 2004, 2005. So over the last 20 years, the mission of the Huffines has evolved from there. And where it is today is that it has funding from this endowment, and this can be used for, for various activities to promote sports medicine, human performance endeavors, both at the student level and in faculty research, and then in a lot even in the dissemination. So, and uh, we, they've been very active in their own podcasts, right? And, and we have host things like, which was the Huffines discussion, is now the Hilliard discussion, bring, we'll try to bring activities to campus and to the community. You recently came to Texas A&M back over the summer. How has your reception been so far? Oh, it's, it's been great. Um, I was familiar with Texas A&M in mm -hmm. the past with, with some of the faculty here. I've known graduates from Texas A&M. Obviously, they're all over the country. And uh, I was always intrigued, one, by, by the, this large R1-type research university. It, it, it's very reminiscent of I, I went to Ohio State, and it's – a similar large university, and in those you can find all kinds of things if you look. And uh, that's where it's been now with Huffines Institute. And sometimes, you know, you have different places to find terms, but an institute in reality is one that goes across colleges, so it'll span the university. So there's a lot of stakeholders even outside of kinesiology or the College of Education. And so I spent a lot of time um, since arriving in June just meeting with a lot of those stakeholders over at the Health Science Center and engineering and uh, public health, various faculty throughout the College of Education. And so they, that's been uh, amazing. And then even meeting a lot of the students and others and that are just associated with Huffines in the different areas like sports science or the, the kinesiology area. What are some current activities and initiatives going on right now at Huffines? Yeah, well, that's... Uh, Today's a very important day because I think there's a lot of graduate students working. There's a deadline at 5 o'clock to get their graduate student research grants in. So I think, uh, but the, some of the initiatives currently are the awards we give out. We just awarded um, two faculty grants. Those were sort of um, submitted last 
spring when I was coming in, and we did, but we just had them reviewed and, and awarded, and we um, have uh, two of those very interesting projects. So those are called seed grants. So projects that maybe um, are just developing, they're like a seed, but given a little money, maybe they'll sort of sprout into further projects. And we have uh, a couple of interesting ones, one's using hippotherapy or horses to treat Parkinson patients and give them. And then we have another one, Dr. Stephen Line, who we're featuring right now um, with some of our, our website stuff in primary care out at the Health Science Center is studying return to play protocols for concussions, which are a very serious problem for soccer players and football players. And so we're very excited that those projects can get going and it's funding from the Huffines to promote those. We also have, like today, we give out graduate student research grants. Okay. And those are students that we have what we call student members of the Huffines and we have faculty affiliates to the Huffines and to people that are affiliated, that means they support the activities and they go to our events. We have these awards, and so those students are eligible for research awards to help them. These are graduate students mm -hmm. to help them with their dissertation projects or others, usually in some area of sports medicine and human performance. Now, the other ones we do um, that I, I think are very impactful is we give out travel awards mm. to our student members. So that's with ongoing research they've done here at Texas A&M. They can then um, travel to meetings, in, you know, in professional meetings, to present the research and other things, and that promotes the activities we're doing here that also spreads the knowledge that's gained here. So the last one, which is sort of a keynote, is sort of the, the Hilliard discussion and the people we bring to campus to help interact with the faculty and students, provide knowledge, potential impetus for future research projects, and uh, I think that's a very impactful thing we do also. With other guests that we've spoken to on this podcast, it seems like that outside knowledge is really important because you can learn as much as you you want to inside the walls of the university, but having those guest speakers, guest lectures, people from the outside coming in, it seems like that has to be a pretty important part of the student experience here. Oh, I, I agree completely. And, that, you know, that's one of the, um, I think a lot of colleges within Texas A&M and departments do a good job with their seminar series trying to do that. We're just an extra um, sort of uh, place where we can bring in these people and then even spanning wider than just a given department or college and promote the whole area that was the original goal of the, the Huffines, which is breakthroughs in sports medicine, breakthroughs in human performance. And it's not just with the athlete. We're looking across the lifespan. So sports medicine classically goes into orthopedics and physical therapy and occupational therapy and rehabilitation. And that's a big problem in your 30, 40 year old. And we call athletes across the spectrum. Those are people that work outside. Those are tactical. We call tactical athletes. Those are police, even the military, firemen. We do a lot in those areas. And so there's a lot of these different types of people that really impact the community that, that, that um, need to, um, can benefit from the, the type of work we're promoting. And you talked about the travel awards that students yeah. can take. And that's, again, getting outside of kind of this yeah. bubble, this community. Um, how can students take advantage of those travel awards? Is that something that they apply to? Or yeah. how does and that work? We have the uh, information on our, on our website. Okay. And uh, we promote those through the we, – we have, what, Twitter X and sure. uh, Instagram and uh, – All the social media yeah, accounts. Yeah, and so we try to make them widely known. Mm -hmm. And then if when they went in doubt, they can always email us at Huffines Institute. And uh, those we give out during the entire year. Okay. Some of the other ones have deadlines that may be more specific, and so those are options for them. To learn more about the Kinesiology and Sport Management Department, click on the link in the description below. You mentioned the Hilliard discussion. Um, can you tell us more about that event and its significance for the students and the faculty? Yeah. Well, the original Huffines and then Hilliard discussion is one of the first ways that I actually became uh, – um, aware of the Huffines Institute nationally. Those were widely promoted events over the last 10, 12 years, mm -hmm. you know, bringing in panels of experts. And uh, they, they've just been very important to, both for the uh, promoting what's going on here at Texas A&M with bringing these people in and the knowledge gained in their streams throughout internationally. Uh, um, and it's amazing how many people actually look forward to these or look forward to, to being invited to speak. This year, um, I think it's changed between spring and fall. We're going to be having it in February of next year. Okay. And we're actually hosting it um, when they have themes. And so the theme we're going in with right now is 
Um, we're working with some of the faculty here at Texas A&M are interested in this thing called the Southern Heat Initiative, but all the, the issues that come with physical performance in the heat, and you might think of the athletes, but look at all the people that have to work out in the heat, and yeah. look at your firemen and your policemen and the others, and the challenges, and really, we, we have a limited understanding and some of the guidelines even for the, the what goes on there and, and what happens physiologically, what happens to people that are on certain medicines, and so... We really are trying to promote that with uh, a lot of the interest of faculty that are here on campus. And so that's going to be one of our themes, and we'll be doing that in the spring. And that'll go with, um, we're, um, we have various affiliated resources with the Huffines, and one we'll be opening in the spring in conjunction with kinesiology and the college education is a thermal regulatory laboratory where they're going to be able to, in controlled conditions, study the heat. So oh, wow. that's under the direction of Dr. Stephen Reekman, who's here in mm-hmm. the, this department, and his collaborators. He's, he's developed sort of a national network on this. It's a big question, this heat question. So we're looking forward to that theme for this upcoming year, and we'll have more about that um, as we uh, um, get the dates firmed up and things. And you say Southern Heat Initiative, which makes sense. And in the South, obviously, it does get warmer and for longer periods of time, but I mean, summer heat is something that happens all across the country and, and all across the world, right. obviously. Well, what I was calling it the Southern Heat Initiative. That's what Steve, Dr. Reekman has uh-huh. coined it. Just because amazingly, um, and maybe it's just because of the history, most of the the uh, environmental heat-related research has been done in the northern climates. Oh, right. And so it can be controlled in places like mm-hmm. University of Connecticut and others. They're leaders in the field, but those people aren't living in the hot. And so this really... Look, he's worked with a bunch of institutions across the South, including a lot in the SEC and mm-hmm. some throughout Texas, um, on ways that uh, really in areas that are far hotter than some of the ones you know that we've sure. mentioned. And that's sort of been a deficiency, and that's one of the things they're trying to work with. And that's you're right, exactly. It, it is a um, worldwide problem. This is the Southern Heat Initiative has to do more with the universities that are going to be associated. Yeah, that makes sense. What are some key challenges in the fields of kinesiology and sport management, and how is the Huffines Institute helping address those? I'm looking at my background more looking at through the lens of the kinesiology, but I think it spans across. Um, These fields are extremely popular with students, Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and you can go across the United States and the large number of students, because it's almost the pre-health major, and there's a lot of other interests within the sports management field. And I think one thing with that is the interesting sort of educational background these students get that is multidisciplinary and goes across many fields, and where it's like, it's not just business, or it's not just physiology, or it's you know anatomy, or mm-hmm. something. and you're getting these multidisciplinary trained people, and trying to make sure within a the, uh, the campus environment to start with and, and even educating them, that they look to experiences even beyond just the kinesiology department because what they do is so applicable to even everything from the veterinary school to engineering to others. And I think they, they can even benefit sort of true innovation comes from multidisciplinary teams. And I think these students are really well suited to get involved with that. And so I think one of the challenges is for the faculty and others and I think they're doing that here to not be siloed in your area and take advantage of all these resources that are available um, at Texas A&M. And I think that's where the uh, innovation and the impactful work will come forward. I think of the phrase well-rounded athletes yeah. or multi-sport athletes yeah. when they're growing up. You want them to kind of, you know, dabble yeah. a little bit of everything. And it, it seems like that's kind of the well, same concept with students. Yeah. And it, that's if you think, go back to your athlete mm-hmm. analogy, and sometimes that's very difficult. People want specialization early right. in others, and some could argue probably either way, but when there's too much specialization early, and when you're talking about um, a big buzzword now with a lot of um, business or even research mm-hmm. are having these multidisciplinary teams because you have multi-pronged projects that go in different directions. Sure. And I think those are the kind of people that can that are educated in the kinesiology. Mm. What future plans and goals do you have for the Huffines Institute in the next few years? Well, right now we're just looking at um, how can we leverage this wonderful gift from the Huffines, the endowment. And we also have another estate gift from the Hilliards who um, who are helped with the Hilliard discussion and others. How can we leverage that into more resources to actually um, expand research across 
more of the campus related to the sports medicine and uh, human performance questions. We'd like to move the, our questions, and I think what we have in some areas, but across the lifespan, because a lot of these affect both aging, and we're in a college of education, and um, while we have the college athletes, a lot of the same questions are very impactful for your 8 to 18 year old and uh, working into those, those areas. And as uh, Texas A&M as a university and the Health Science Center are making initiatives into sports medicine and more vigorously, I think expanding what we do in the sports medicine area, because that return to play, the healing of injuries, all that is a very critical thing for all sorts of athletes. What is the student involvement like with the Huffines Institute, and are you looking to increase that? Yes, we are. Okay. And uh, we're just going over ideas now, and some of that we get with funding. We would like to create Huffine Fellows at the undergraduate level that are involved in more research. We have a lot of students that um, we have. Uh, we do a lot of testing of firefighters, physical function, cardiorespiratory things within. We have a physical um, readiness laboratory that St- Dr. Stephen Martin heads and they, um, here, and they they give a lot of experience to the students in kinesiology and even other majors. We have a lot of these research experiences for graduate students, but there's always room to grow that. And uh, there's a lot of different ways we can even be maybe be more involved with the sports management type students because within the marketing and the other things you need to do um, and the, 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 the disseminating of knowledge that we also do as one of our missions, um, I think there's a lot of ways we can grow. We have some very creative students that get involved in our sort of uh, media. They mm-hmm. love the social media. Sure. We have some talented students that are involved in, in that on a regular basis. What kind of advice would you give to a student who's maybe already in the field or looking to get into kinesiology and they're kind of just not exactly sure where to, to take that next step? Um, do you have any advice just as a professor, um, as somebody who's been in this field for a long time? Well, the advice I would give to the students that are here, because we have a lot of students that come into kinesiology, and I was actually chair of exercise science in the University of South Carolina, and it was roughly this size. And really, I talked about the multidisciplinary nature of kinesiology, is to take advantage of the value-added experiences you get at a university, the interacting with your professors and the research they're doing, things like an institute like Huffines would be doing, but there's many other institutes and centers here on campus. And so... Getting involved in things outside of just the standard coursework is, I think, what an institution like Texas A&M allows for, and it's just taking advantage of that. And that doesn't end when you graduate. And, you know, I'm, we work in graduate education, and we have a robust master's and Ph.D. Like, that getting involved, growing, learning, getting certifications and other things as you go out, um, to expand your knowledge and what areas you become interested in. We have in our annual report this year and uh, um, highlighting some of our alumni from, from that worked in Huffines but graduated from Texas A&M and the different career paths they go because of things they got involved with. And they may become, they were working in cardiovascular uh, testing. Now they're a pharmaceutical rep and just love their work and they're using the background. And so I think you know, taking advantage of all these experiences, interacting with your professors, interacting with grad students, that's what I would advise. Dr. Carson, thank you so much for joining us today. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Oh, it was a pleasure. And uh, I would just say that um, we're always looking for people to get involved. We have a sponsor, a lot of activities, so please stay in tune. We have, the whole goal of these activities are to get people out, faculty, students, community members who might be interested. And if you're not sure where to get started, please email us. And that's one of our our goals too, is to try to connect you with people that might be doing things that you're interested in. Excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you for listening to On The Move. Please consider liking and subscribing to the podcast. And if you want to learn more about the Department of Kinesiology and Sport Management, click on the link in the description below. This podcast is housed in the College of Education and Human Development at Texas A&M University, where we transform lives.